reading from from Judges chapter 11 and verse number 1. Judges 11 and verse number 1. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we are dealing with how to heal from brokenness. Many times people go through different type of um, emotional challenge and they don't know that um, the problem they encountered in the past had a negative impact on their mind and in their personality and adjusted some things that has now affected the way they relate with people every day. Glory to God. And some persons don't even know that with the kind of situation that they have been in, they even need counseling and they even need therapy to be able to come out well and still be what God has ordained for them to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we are taking a very, we are taking um, a very important story in the Bible. Then I will begin to relate it to every other aspect of life. Yes, sir. Judges chapter 11 from verse 1. The Bible says, Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. He was the son of who? He was the son of who? And her lot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. So there's a man in the Bible called Gilead. Um, he was a married man. He was also a man that was well to do. So he left his family one time. And he has children, sons and daughters with this his wife. So he left his family and traveled to another city and met a particular lady who the Bible calls a harlot. Are you with me? A prostitute in our time. And he laid with this prostitute and the prostitute got pregnant. Are you with me? So this Jephthah was a product of that escapade of, El uh, of Gilead. Are you there? That one night stand of Gilead was what produces Jephthah. And this background impacted upon him. The next verse. The next verse. He said, And Gilead's wife bare him sons. So, Jephthah was born of the prostitute to Gilead. Gilead also has a wife, a legitimate wife in the house, who gave birth to sons for him. Are you there? Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And what did they do? They thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a what? Of a strange woman. Which means you are the son of a harlot. So, he was not the one that put himself in the condition that he found himself. He was not the one that told the father to um, go after a harlot. Are you there? It was not also the one that told the mother to be a harlot and not to be a normal woman. But now he found himself in a situation where he could neither stay with the mother who is a harlot nor stay with the father who is a responsible man but the children and the wife in the house would not allow him stay with them. So they thrust him out and what happened was that he became area boy, what you call area boy today. Are you with me? So he began to live in the street, sleeping in bridges, feeding, carrying load, and trying to survive each day on the street without having shelter. Are you with me? And uh, he grew up also among other guys who had similar situation. So other guys who had similar situation that were in the street, they were drawn to him. The next verse. The next verse. It said, Then Jephthah fled from his brethren because they wanted to kill him if he would stay, if, if he continued staying with them. Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. Vain men means area boys, boys who they didn't go to school. All they do is to wake up in the morning, stay in the Fort Junction, play a smoky bowl read newspaper, continue, snatch phone. I don't know if you are getting me. Wait for the unsuspected, snatch their phone, 
uh, snatch a bag. That's how, as they, as they enter each day, it's either a bag or a phone they have to use to survive that day. So, all these Agbero boys, he became their leader. I don't know if you are getting me. So, this was the case of this Jephthah. And he was broken when his brother sent him away to leave his father's house. He felt very bad that he is not responsible for this condition, but he has to bear responsibility for it. And the part, the part of God, which I want to bring to our understanding, many times we see brokenness as a problem and begin to question God why. When certain things happen, let's say a guy promises you marriage, after he had been with you for some years, then when it is time for the guy to uh, do the needful, he disappoints you. And after the disappointment, you are left heartbroken. I don't know if you are getting me. Because even family has warned you that this person might not take you seriously. You held on to him. You gave yourself to him. And at the end of the day, he has disappointed you. Your heart is broken. I don't know if you are with me. And the case of this Jephthah was not very far because brokenness is similar in nature because it's like rejection. He was rejected and now to face life on his own without knowing where the next daily bread will come from. But he had to face it every day that way. Glory to God. But the mystery about God, the mystery about God is that God likes to use wounded people. Tell someone by your side, God likes to use broken and wounded people when you are not wounded God will not use you very far when you are not broken God will not use you very far in fact say in fact if everything is okay with you God will orchestrate a condition to make it not okay before he can use you yeah is that what is your pain? Was it that at a tender age you were raped? Was it that at a particular period of your life you went through a kind of pain that broke you? Like Jacob said, Laban church changed him. You served master for almost seven to ten years. When it was time for him to when it was time for him to settle you, he brought up a quarrel so that he would drive you away. I don't know if you are getting me. You have been with the person for several years and when it was time for him to settle you so that you have your own business, he raised up something so that he will not settle you with anything. For 10 different times, Laban just changed Jacob and this got to his heart and pained him seriously until he had to cry to God. Many times when you go through this pain, you begin to, many of these persons, instead of them to cry to God, they begin to blame God that God is the reason why they are going through what they are going through. In fact, they draw away from God. Why will God allow them to rape me? And that's why many of you too, that are women and young ladies, you need to guard your young children, especially girls. Cousins, brothers, nephews, uncles, all these people are neighbors. Neighbors. 70% of child rape is traceable to neighbors and close relatives. Because a stranger will not be allowed into the compound or the environment. So who will harm the child are the people you already trust that they will not harm the child. I don't know if you are getting me. So when a lady tells you I was raped when I was small, just check very well. It's not far. It's a cousin. You sent your daughter for holiday, two weeks holiday. Before and when it happens, they will keep quiet. They will not tell anybody. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. And that keeping quiet so opens a door. They don't know. A door has been opened. At the right time, Satan will come knocking and make and begin to give them appetite of having sex up and down. Before they know, one lady is already sleeping with more than 10 and she doesn't know why. She's not enjoying it, but she doesn't know why she's just addicted to having many, many men and she's not able to be responsible. She's not able to focus. Even if she's dating somebody, she's not able to be faithful with the person. She's dating this one, she's sleeping with this one, she's sleeping with that one. Why? A window was opened at a very tender age. Such people, they all need counseling to be able to heal from that door that was opened. Are you sure you're with me? Are you sure you're with me? So as, a, as an individual, 
when I met my wife, my wife had to play a serious role in my life because interacting was a problem. To say I love you, where, where will I learn I love you from? It was an issue. So she had to say, when she say I love you, I will say thank you. She will not say, no, you are not supposed to say thank you. You are supposed to say I love you back. I don't know if you are getting me. Then I will not type I love you back. I don't know if you are there. Yes. So she had to begin to show me emotional intelligence. So what happens when a child is rejected? That period of the loneliness of the child is that the child builds defense and his emotions goes very low. And if he gets in the hands of Aya Kill at that time, he has gotten a perfect protege. He can kill 1,000 persons and see it the next minute. That's why you see the street is cold because father and mother have failed in their responsibility. As they fail in their responsibility, when you go to the street as early, go to, go to the north, go to Bornu, the greatest problem we are facing in this country about insecurity. Go and see the people you are calling Boko Haram. 16 years old, 14 years old, 13 years old, 11 years old. 19 years old, not 40 years old men, no. small, small boys carrying a K-47. Why? The street had taught them how to be brutal. At 14, they are already using machine gun. They are used to the sound of gun. No emotion. They said, oh, they caught security, um, the, uh, security people, caught somebody that was trying to kidnap somebody, and they, they brought the people out. I, I'm looking at them. There's a 14 years old boy there. What's a 14 years old boy doing in kidnapping gang? Where is the father? Where is the mother? So we have a broken society because we have parents who give birth to children and leave the children for the streets to take care of. So when we talk about healing, you have to heal yourself, but you have to all make a vow, especially men. Don't sleep with ladies that you know if they get pregnant, you will not take responsibility for the children. Ladies, don't begin to sleep with a man when you know he has not paid dowry and is not your husband. What comes out of it, you will not be able to bear the responsibility of the child married men and married women when you as a woman once you have problem with your husband the first option should not be to pack your load and leave the house the first option is to kneel down and plead with your husband not only because of him but because of God and the children this rush that you are trying to rush away from the house so by the time you are outside when they will tell you what the new wife is doing to the children. Your heart will tear into pieces and you will wish you didn't leave your husband's house. So, mothers, don't be selfish. He doesn't love me again. Really? It's enough to sabotage the, the future of the children. Do you know what it means to leave your two beautiful girls in the hand of a stepmother do you know what it means the younger brother of that stepmother will come and rape all those girls king and all that and i don't know if you are i don't know if you are with me yes so a lot of persons are broken and you don't know why they've made certain decisions and why they've positioned their life the way their life has been and satan will brood on that to ensure that he should change them and limits what they can be. Glory to God. So when we talk about healing, you, everybody that is here, first of all, you need to genuinely heal. You look at your back and see, was my heart broken some time ago? Did I make some decisions that I felt I was foolish then? Because I felt I was foolish, I then made some decisions. And these decisions that I made, so I'm holding them to ransom. And that decision might just be what is hindering the person that is seeing you now from coming into your life and that person is a good person. If that other guy did not break your heart and you met this person for the first time with your former self, you would have been married. 
So what has stopped your marriage so far for the past five years now? So is the experience you had with OK that you are transferring to your every day? You have left OK, but you carry the load of OK. So every day, OK has gone. He's living his life. But you carry OK's load. And you are using it to affect your today. So which load have you been carrying? What are the decisions you have made as a result of your previous painful experiences? That today now affects the way you relate with people. You that used to be free. You that used to discuss. You that used to be friendly. You that used to show care. Because you showed the guy care and he defrauded you. Ran away with your 500,000. Now you cannot show care again. And that care that you have withdrawn has also made some men to feel that you are very stingy. Whereas you are a very caring person. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to show you here is that what is the wound? What is the wound? What is that pain you've had in your past? Because in that my low stage, I made a vow that I will never forgive my father. For all that I went through, I made a vow I will never forgive my father. It was Bishop Dag, as I was growing up to begin to know the Lord the more. It was Bishop Dag that said, and that care that you have withdrawn has also made some men to feel that you are very stingy, whereas you are a very caring person. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to show you here is that what is the wound? What is the wound? What is that pain you've had in your past? Because in that my low stage, I made a vow that I will never forgive my father. For all that I went through, I made a vow I will never forgive my father. It was Bishop Dag as I was growing up to begin to know the Lord the more. It was Bishop Dag that said, if you hate your father, you will live to fight his own demon and you will become like your father. You will soon have a child that you cannot take care of. Don't worry. That's what he said. He said, never fight your father. Why? He said there was a particular president of Ghana who said, these people, they think I am bad. No problem. When I am gone, the demon that is fighting me here when they confront the demon, I will be here watching them. So, what your father encountered that overcame him is waiting for you. If you don't grow spiritually and grow out of the offense you have for your father, you will not be able to do what? To overcome. And with time, you will see that that thing you were... Have you not seen some persons, they are angry with their father that their father is a drunk? themselves when they got to 35 they became drunk too what happened i thought you were the one calling quarreling with your father now what your father was doing exactly is what you are doing now because he thought that it is just what the father is doing he never knew that it's a problem a foundational problem that the father could not overcome so you you have to rise above it to overcome and as long as you hold on forgiveness you don't have the power to rise are you there so you have to release your father from your heart. So that was part of one thing that was holding me down. The period where I was saying I will never forgive my father. I will never forgive my father. I didn't really see. I've not That period I've not grown. I've not seen some open doors. Like some persons here now. You've made up your mind. That ah, if I get money tomorrow. I'm not going to take care of my papa. For what he has done. If I get money tomorrow, I'm not going to take care of this. You know what will happen? You will not have the Tomorrow will not come. You will not have it. Don't worry yourself. You see, if you want to have that money, you have to release him from your heart. And say, I forgive him. And when I have money, I will still take care of him if I have the opportunity to do so. And by God's grace, I took care of my father until he... He just passed on September last year and I was responsible majorly for the barrier and laying him to rest. I don't know if you are getting me. And today, I look back, sometimes I see which is still alive. Because before he even died, I sent him some money on Friday, he died on Sunday. I was happy that in everything I forgave 
and we got along and everything was fine. So if you are here as a young man, you talk to your father anyhow, you look at him, you insult him, maybe because you feel there was one thing he did or maybe he didn't treat your mother well. I've told you, the issue that happened between yourself, your, your, your father and your mother is their business. It's not your business. Your father must be honored, must be respected. Senior uncles must be respected and must be honored. Why? These are ladders that you cannot, you cannot rise and climb without them. Honor must be given to them. I don't know if you are getting me. Are you sure you are with me? So, the brokenness I experienced with him. The pain where sometimes he will tell me to come. I will go to his house. Before I get there, he will leave the house very early. Sometimes he will be inside. He will say, they should tell me he's not around. And he has already promised me school fees. I will, he will promise me school fees. The transport I will use to leave worry to supply, go and come, go and come, go and come, will be almost 50% of the school fees. And he will not give me. He will either run away from the house. So, at the time, I felt it was spiritual because he has money. He's paying the school fees of the children in the house. What is happening? Why is my case different? I don't know if you get me. All those words were the things that gathered the pain. I'm sharing all this with you. Because I might have not gone through exactly the pain that you have experienced. But I'm trying to use my pain that God helped me to come out of as a point of reference for you that that very pain that made you make certain decisions you need to ensure that those decisions they are aligned to the word of God if the word of God says you are supposed to forgive adjust that decisions to what? to forgiveness and, and heal genuinely when you say I will never forgive there is a wound somewhere and hurting people will always hurt others are you with me? Are you sure you are with me? So in the journey of being wounded or being broken, how do people heal? How do people heal from it? How easy is it to come out of a broken situation? Are you with me? Glory to God. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse number 16 to 18. How do people easily heal? How to heal from being broken? So next week I'm going to I'm going to take you people take you a little deeper on the concept of pain. How that when God wants to use somebody, He allows pain to come in, He heals the pain, and at the end of the day, that pain is what becomes the experience and the strength you need to stand. As somebody that is strong. All the people that God used all through the Bible. All the ones that did not have pain. pain a chance of pain was created for them. The reason is because when God made Adam. He placed him in the garden of Eden. Adam did not work for anything. He had everything. And what happened? He threw everything away. Because he didn't know how they were all created. So God has a new policy. Before he will use you. You must come back. Suffer for the thing. So that when you have it you will value it. I don't know if you are getting me. So value goes with how you got it. If everything came to you free, you don't know how they came, you will not know how to value it. So everything was prepared for Adam. And what Adam did, he threw them away. So when the last Adam was coming, God did not provide everything for him. God told him, come, come in the house of a carpenter. Come in a manger. Come in a poor home. Understand poverty. I don't know if you are getting me. So the last Adam came, grew up in poverty, understood what poverty is, and everything that he had were the things they worked for. And from that experience, the Bible say he learned obedience through the things he has suffered. So the Bible say you cannot be obedient if you don't suffer anything. So we'll look at that next week. Glory to God. Are you with me? The Bible says Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee concerning what? This matter. The next verse. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us 
from the burning fiery furnace. And he will do what? Deliver us out of thine hand, O king. The next verse. But if not, so calm down. But if not, so our God whom we serve is able to what? Our God whom we serve is able to do what? Is able to deliver us. So, while they were saying the God they serve is able to deliver them, they remembered that this God they were serving was there watching. When Nebuchadnezzar came to Israel and captured them and killed people and catch, captured them to Babylon. Are you with me? Captured them to Babylon, castrated them, and they are currently serving in Babylon as servants. Are you there? So, they wanted to say, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. But they remember that he didn't deliver them from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. So this God, sometimes he might not deliver. I don't know if you are there. To see whether your believing will go beyond. Are you there? Go beyond just saying he does things for you. That's why you see that if the revelation of God you know is that God bless me, bless me, bless me. That's the only revelation of God you know. You'll be a baby Christian. You see? You'll be a baby Christian. You have to grow to the point where you understand that if God gives, God, you get to a point where you say, Lord, if you give me this thing, I love you. If you don't also give it to me, I love you. I've come to that level of revelation. When you get there, you have become a matured Christian. If your level of Christianity is see what God does, one day you will backslide. Why? A situation will happen and you'll be expecting God to show up. He will not show up. In fact, he will not show up in one year. He will not show up in two years. In fact, how long it takes you to, to surrender is how long it will take before he will show up. So he said, he said, they said, here, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou had set up. So what are they trying to say here? The God that we serve, we are resolute about him. That he will deliver us, we are, it's not even a condition. Whether he delivers us or he doesn't deliver us, we will not bow to a graven image. Are you there? Remember, I am talking about how to heal. Now, before this time, there was a pain in their heart that God did not deliver them. Are you there? Because they sang the song by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. So, when they remembered their town, remembered their water, remembered their freedom, they wept and they cried, Where is our God? Where is our God? So there was pain in the heart. Where is our God? Even in that pain, they had to heal themselves and say, even though I have this pain, Father, I still trust you. Even though my father and my mother, they are not here. Father, I submit myself to you. Be my father. Be my mother. I'm showing you how to heal. Are you there? And when I was, when I was, that, when I was that young, when I entered that moment where I begin to feel that loneliness and, and the challenge because of that dysfunctional background. I begin to sing some kind of songs and it's okay to cry. Are you with me? It's okay to cry and release that emotion to God. And I'll begin to sing the song in my, in my dialect. It's a song that you know but in the dialect I begin to sing it. no no mi Nukbokiti ni niara no rigale ombi no mi alleluia oluwa re sapẹ mi no rigo aleyewe olugbe sa gbegbe si gbe oluwa re sapẹ mi no rigo aleyewe olugbe sa gbegbe si gbe i will not add my own version emi magushe olugbe gbonoro she tell me, "Be me, O Dora, na marry me, O. Eh, O Shadai, O Oresho, Lili, me. Tell me, Tere, O Luwa, O Tere, tell me." I begin to talk to him, like David was singing. Also, 
David also had the same background. I will talk about David and the rest next week. David also had the rest, that type of background. And in the back place where he was keeping the sheep, he learned how to praise God. He learned how to talk to God. Because there was no friend to talk to. There was no brother to talk to. There was no father to talk to. There was no mother to talk to. But there is someone that is up there. He's your father. He's your mother. He's your husband. He's your wife. He can feel that void that a wife that left you has created. He can feel that void that a husband that left you with three kids had created. He can feel that void that childless, childlessness has created. Are you believing God for a child? And now you are getting close to menopause and the child didn't come. Yes. He is the husband to the barren. You didn't have child but he will feel that void. And if you want to take child, you can adopt. Because once he feels that void, the pain goes away and you begin to find fulfillment still. And this is one thing I want to tell you ladies. Ladies, don't move into depression. Don't allow anything make you bow. If you don't bow, you will not burn. Your first priority is the fulfillment you get from God, not husband. Some ladies, some ladies, they are ready to throw God away because of man. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. If they are not married, there's no prayer you pray here that is entering their head. There's no message you preach that is entering their head. Don't be like that. Don't become a desperate lady. Are you with me? Your first fulfillment is God. Once he fills that void in your heart, once he gives you that joy of your salvation, once he gives you that peace on the inside, that's all you need. Once that peace is there, you begin to say, Father, I trust you for husband. But I want you to know, my love for you is up to the extent that even if husband doesn't come, I will not turn my back against you. Wow, you are about to get married soon. I said you are about to get married soon. Many times God is waiting for when you will cross the Rubicon and begin to say, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Um, but I also want you to know, O King Nebuchadnezzar, um, if even if it doesn't deliver us, we are ready to go into this fire and burn in this fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you are getting me. And what happened? They stood on their ground. Nebuchadnezzar kept to his word. They threw them into the fire. Ah, and, and, and the fire was turned into a sea. I don't know if you are with me. And there was a fourth man in the fire. Now the problem is why did God not show up when they were in Israel? Why did God not show up when they were with Nebuchadnezzar? Why did God wait in the fire? So that all your, all your faith on yourself would have been drowned. And you are fully relaxed on him and fully dependent upon him. I don't know if you are getting me. He waited in the fire so that you don't say ah, he, he was getting close to the fire, he changed his mind. No. Uh, he waited in the fire so that it would be clear that you were already ready to die. I don't know if you are there. God is waiting for that point that you get to and say whether come rain, come sun, my focus is on the Lord. My commitment is to the Lord. If he gives me this job this year, is my God. If he doesn't come this year, he's still my God. If I get the promotion this year, is my God. If I don't get it this year, is my God. If I get married this year, is my God. If I don't get married this year, is my God. This don't define my faith. God defines my faith. Are you with me? Human beings don't define my faith. Car doesn't define my faith. House doesn't define my faith. Dollar doesn't define my faith. Naira doesn't define my faith. Business doesn't define my faith. My faith is rock solid. Sometimes God is waiting for you to get to the place of pain because he like meeting people in the junction called pain association. I don't know if you are with me. Many times you are crying to God. He's waiting for you on a street called pain. When you get there, you will find God. Yeah. There's a street called pain. If you don't know that street, you don't know God. Yeah. Yeah. So next week, I will open it to you. Yeah. It took Abraham. Uh, he allowed him to take the pain 
God will come and say, Abraham, look at the star. Can you count it? <laughs> Abraham said, God, these visions you are showing me, I'm tired. I'm going childless. When will you give me a child? And God will come the next day, Abraham, I promise you. Abraham said, all these many, many promises. Just give me one child. Leave all the many promises. Yeah. Why? God was waiting for him to get to the point of absolute surrender. Where the pain has climaxed to full dependency on him. Are you with me? Do you know where your healing will begin? Your healing begins when you are not trying to revenge anymore. You have left revenge for him. You have left every revenge for him. He got you pregnant and ran away and left the child for you to take care of. Forgive him. Heal from it. Are you with me? I said what? Heal from it. Let God do the vengeance. Let him do the punishment. Do you know that if a guy impregnated you and denies the pregnancy and runs away and you know the child is his own, do you know if you are cursing him, you will soon hear that he has traveled abroad and is any more. He has built house. The more you curse him, the more he will be prospering. You don't, you don't understand. It. You need to come to the school. I will teach you the school. Yes. The more you curse him, the more you will hear good news. You will see status. You will close your eyes. So stop the curse. Heal. Forgive him. Let God handle the matter so that you can move forward on yourself. Yeah. Because your limitation is your own forgiveness. And as you hold that your own forgiveness, so, huh? <laughs> you are not going anywhere. You will keep hearing the person that you are cursing, cursing from today till tomorrow. Why? Why? It's part of what I will show you next week. There are, there are four categories of people on the earth. Wicked people, selfish people, ignorant people, good people. Out of the seven point something, seven point something billion people on the earth, they are all categorized into these four. These four group of people are seated in this church today. Wicked people, selfish people, ignorant people, ignorant and naive people, ignorant or naive people, and what? Good people. These four persons, they are the ones seated here. But the problem is that the other three used to claim number four. Wicked people claim good people. Selfish people claim good people. Ignorant and naive people claim good people. So next week I will show you how to unmask them. Now, the reason why I tell you, I told you next week is because I'm closing now. Okay? The reason why I told you next week is because I'm closing now. And the reason why I said I will show you this for is because everybody that is wounded today and will be wounded tomorrow, they are caused by wicked and selfish people. Anybody that is broken, don't worry. Just tell me the person. By the time I do the analysis, it must be either wicked or selfish. All of them. It must either be what? Yes. Or naive. Because Satan uses wicked, selfish, and naive. Naive is very bad because naive is like playing book. And they are a tool in the hand of wicked people. So wicked people just write on naive mind. Say, go and shoot that man. You just go. Bah, you don't kill him. Outside, we just put something inside food and kill a whole grown man. So that's it. Naive. 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 So I said, everybody that you see that is hurting, everybody that you see that is broken, it is this group of people that cause it. Only the good people that make the difference, okay? So, but the shock is that, look at the shock. On the earth right now, like in Nigeria now, and if you narrow it to this church, let's say there are 100 people, let's say there are 100, 100 persons in this church. Huh? 58% are wicked. Yes. I'm giving you percentage. 
Okay? 20% selfish. Another 20% naive, ignorant. How many percent is good? How many? How many left? 2%. Uh, do you know do you know the problem with these two percent? Eh? The wicked people will live longer than these two percent. So next week we'll look at it. We will use statistics. I will show you in Lagos. This is the statistics. In Ghana, this is the statistics. In Europe, this is statistics. No story. Even you will go to your family, check the wicked people and the good one. In, you will look at your family, you see, ah, this very good man, he died 45. This wicked one, he get white beard, he's still there. See, they keep people for the family and he's still alive. <laughs> so, the problem now is who is to be blamed? Because when these wicked people break people's heart and wound them, the next thing, the people blame God. But it's not God. It's not God. Glory to God. Have you been blessed this morning? Are you, have you learned something this morning? Hallelujah. I want to give one or two persons opportunity to ask one or two questions. Maybe somebody that has experienced brokenness. Please give the mic to somebody. You have a question. There's a brother here. Yes, somebody that have I need a good testimony. Somebody that needs healing. Ask a question. Quickly, quickly, so that we can close. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. So, my question is this. I had father issues. Okay, you had father issues. Yes. Okay. You know, um, yes, it was, God was able to take things from me. Yeah, but yeah. I knew too much for me. Yeah, why? Well, yeah. I tried to, yes. but things... Yeah, it was, it was then. Okay. Well, I just wish I had done better. Yeah. But sometimes that pain is up and down. Yes. Yes. I understand. I understand. Like like what I told you. My mom son, even when I was even when I was in the I was married, a man with child, yet the pain just comes once in a while because I remember some of those verbal abuse she uses. You are the reason for this, my pain. You are the reason for this, my condition. You are the reason for this. Your father is there moving aimlessly. He doesn't know where you are. You know? So those words get to me and it comes even though I'm forgiving. So because you have a conscious memory, those things and those pain you've gone through, they will always come. You cannot delete them. So when we say you have healed, I'm not saying you will not just remember. It's just like someone, someone did you something very bad. Even if you are forgiven, doesn't mean it will delete from your head. You see, as I'm here, so what they did to me when I was four years old, I can remember. Four years old, I can remember what they did to me. So that's the brain for you. So it will still come up, but you see, you will keep giving yourself reason to forgive. Number one, he is late now, and Number two, what has happened has already happened. Then number three, if he could not bless you, do much for you while he was standing, now that he's on his back, his thought towards you might give you favor while you are here. It's just a traditional understanding they used to tell us then in those days. I don't know if you are getting me. Yeah. So, have good thought towards him. The Bible said the memory of the just is blessed. So as you remember him, just say, oh, I wish my dad is still alive. I would have done more for him. Just use it to quench whatever evil or wrong thoughts concerning him that wants to come. Then laugh it out. Do you understand? So, heal genuinely. Then when the thought come, find a way to douse it. Give yourself reason that you have to forgive and you have to let it go. But as to whether it will come once in a while, when situations around it comes, you will always remember. Okay? But the decision you make on it is, is what determines whether you have healed or not. So as long as you are not acting on it, you are not using it to uh, spite him even as he has died, it's okay. As the thought comes, just dish it away and, 
and see yourself as somebody that, oh, I made peace with my dad before he died and I've forgiven him and he's so and let it go. Do you understand? Then with time, it will die down. Then also as you prosper also, it's easier to forgive. The more money enters your account. I don't know if you are getting me. One thing, one, one reason why people find it difficult to forgive too is poverty. Once poverty is too much, you didn't rise, you didn't rise. They punish me, you know, they suffer me. You do the... Once you have one billion in your account now, you, say, well, you will call the person that didn't do you well and say, how much do you need? You send to him. I don't know if you are getting me. Yes, so poverty used to also aggravate the situation. But because I discovered that even when I was still struggling, when I was still struggling, I was holding more grudge than when I became blessed. When I became blessed, I would just go and meet him like this and just give him a bundle of 200,000. He would be hailing me, say, You are my son. You will be no longer around the world like Bishop Wade. You will be no longer around the world. My father is hype man. It's only talk, he talks. <laughs> only talk, he doesn't do anything. So I should give him the money. So me, I know him. So I decided that. Now, so you be. So, since I know saying I saw you be, I know they disturb myself again. It's only money. Once I see his call like this, I don't start to ask of his body. I'll say, how much you need this time? Now we say they start. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting me. So, before I used to be angry with him. But, we, at every time, I had to turn it to a joke. And we use it. And we became very serious friends before he passed. And I started missing him again. Are you there? Yeah. Glory to God. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Do I have one more person? Okay. Okay, quickly. Let me take a lady this time. Quickly, please. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To open yourself, yeah. 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 Bringing you back, yeah. Yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, it's, it's part of what I was talking about, and it's serious. It's a serious issue. If you are not there, you will not understand. When, when people experience some level of heartbreak that it took them almost three to four months to come out of, ah, they just say, never again, never again, never again in my life will I open myself and become this vulnerable okay so see my sister see what you need to understand in this life love is a vulnerable activity that means if you must marry or if you must have relationship you must be willing to be vulnerable now if, you, if before you were vulnerable and someone took advantage of it and now you have come out of it and Whenever someone is trying to show that care again, it reminds you of the past and begins to make you want to relate with this current person with some kind of restrictions, decision, and withdraw yourself. You need to, you need to first tell yourself the truth that I cannot continue like this. Are you with me? One day, I still need to settle down. And even if you don't feel any emotion, like there was a lady that told me, I don't have anywhere in my heart for any man again. That's what the lady told me. Say, this is my heart, so no space again. I don't know. Maybe it will have space later, but now no space again. All the space, they don't cut them. They can't give me part of the meat shop. So now, no space again. <laughs> Are you with me? So as a pastor, we can't sell all manner of people. So I had to explain to her, and, and I told her, I said, see, you, one day, you are supposed to still get married if God, as God opens the door. You are supposed to still have your own kids. You are supposed to still have your family. Okay? So this pain that you are using to suppress this love that can grow again. So you need to, you need to suppress the pain. Don't use the pain to suppress the love. Separate the love. Eh? Like the way they used to separate shaft and granite. Separate it. Blow the, blow the pain away and collect the granite. I don't know if you are getting me. So you need to find a way to see this pain. What led to this pain? You have to go there. Don't press it. If you press it, it will not work. What led to this pain? I was, I was sincere. I was this. I was that. I was this. I was that. I was this. I was this. Okay, fine. I will remain a nice girl. But I will put restriction not to open myself totally until he makes commitment. 
Are you seeing it now? So I will use his commitment to know the commitment I'm to give. Before I just gave commitment without him showing commitment. Are you there? But now, after he shows commitment, I will keep him quiet and be slow until I see commitment. Then I will begin to give some level of commitment. Are you, are you there, my sister? Okay, so you are now to look at the thing. Look at where did I miss it? Where did I behave too foolish? Where did, where did, where, what did I do that made him take advantage of? What did he take advantage of? That very thing he took advantage of. Okay? Not that you will not give it. Hold it. Get commensurate commitment for that thing. Put a price on it. Let Get commensurate commitment for it. Then, begin to give it as he's responding. Don't give him when he has not given himself. I don't know if you are there. Yeah, so with that, you will see that you will begin to heal and become better. So don't shut anybody out. Just rearrange your priorities like for instance there's a brother that did me something wrong the other time and i was very upset so what i finally did was that i i rearranged i rearranged my priorities and said okay i will not give him this opportunity again i've forgiven him but i will not give him this opportunity to be able to do this again so that opportunity i said i will not give him i tied a a price to it that if he's able to meet this condition, I will give him the opportunity. But if he's not able to meet this condition, then I cannot give that opportunity anymore because I don't want him to hurt me like this again and again and again and again. So that's it. As we go through life, like I told you, everybody around you, every, everybody that is here, all of you that are looking at me, so you have four people in your life. You have wicked people around you. You have selfish people around you. You have naive people around you. You have ignorant people. If you understand these four things next week, I'm saying your life will become better. Yeah. So by the time I unmask it next week, it will become easier for you, my sister. You will now easily know that this one is selfish. This one, this one, this one, this one is wicked. So first of all, you'll be able to know that that person that caused you that pain, you will know whether it's in category of wicked or selfish. So that you will now know how to know selfish or wicked, to know whether how to give your, yourself commitment and the price and the condition to give before you open yourself up. But don't allow whatever happened in your past. Don't allow it to begin to affect your future. You are simply giving the person too much credit because he has moved on. But yet you are carrying his matter to affect you today. Do you understand? So saying that you will not give yourself an it's a psychological thing. Sometimes you finish doing it before you catch yourself. Like I told you, I said, I, I, I jumped up from a dream. I thought my mom wanted to cut me with resolve on my face. Do you understand? Because that day, after cutting, she wanted to cut uh, face. I used here to block it before she now did this one. So it's, it was my face. So I've, so that picture of resolve on your face like this always scare me. You will not understand. I will just be scared that while I'm sleeping, somebody will call me a razor blade because of what she did. Because I didn't know it was a possibility until she did it to me. And I have the wristwatch today. The wristwatch. Natural one. And she did it when she was done. She was not even feeling bad. She said, you will show it to your children that Akara, I gave you to eat the next day. You ate it the day before. You will be showing them. That you are a very stubborn boy. <laughs> you be showing your children that you are a very stubborn boy. Funny enough, I have not shown my children. Amen. Glory to God. My sister, did I answer your question? Okay. Do we have any question from Calabar? Yes, sir. sir. Okay. So I'm over here. Yeah. So we have two questions from Calabar. The first one says, since my mom gave birth to me, my father asked for another child, but my mom refused and told him that it's enough to have children. For that the children that she has is enough and because of that my dad went and married another woman so my question is from then till now my mom has been the one taking care of us and my father has never done anything towards us his children but only care for his stepchildren can i forgive my father and my stepmother of course you have to forgive them <laughs> that's the that's the that's just the the bitter challenge about life no matter what is done to you, God did not give you the power to hold forgiveness. You don't have the power. 
Because you will still make mistakes somewhere and ask God for forgiveness. So God said in the Lord's Prayer, huh? He said, how did he put it? Oh, oh, so see the issue. The problem there, self, is that your own forgiveness is not in view. Eh? Forgive us. Don't forgive us. Uh, do you get it? Uh -huh. Forgive us. And also don't forgive as I refuse to also forgive. So that remove forgiveness from your hand. It removes forgiveness from your hand. So it makes wicked people smile. Did you get it? Yeah, it makes wicked people smile. So that situation now, that man is a selfish man. <laughs> the man that went to bring another wife to satisfy what he wants and punish the wife and is now not taking care of the children is a selfish man. That's why I told her. I said, they are not foul. Just go home now. Just list all the people in your life. You will find them. You can put all of them into this for wicked, selfish, naive. You have one uncle, especially uncle, if you have Andrews around you. If you are Andrews here, yeah, come for deliverance. All Andrews have problem. All the Andrews I know across different families, they give the family problem. Andrew. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting me. Yes. So that man is what? He's in the category of what? Selfish. It's not wicked though. He's selfish. That means what I, I don't want to explain next week's message. Continue. Sir, the second question. Yes. Calabar, I said, I am from a broken family. Yeah. And my father is not only irresponsible, but he is fighting the family spiritually. Okay. And because of that, we have lost respect for him. And we have and we have this hatred for him. My mom has been the one taking care of us. When we want to help him, my mom will ask us not to because he has never helped us till this point in life. In a situation like this, what can I do about it? My brother, I have preached this message before. I said, don't inherit your mother's battle. Your mother eh, saw him and he said, this is my fine bubble. This is my fine bubble. This is my fine bubble. When your mother saw him, what did the mother say? This is my fine So, if it's your mama, so don't inherit a battle. Forgive your father. <laughs> you don't understand. You don't understand. Never allow anything make you curse your papa. Oh, I'm just telling you now. Hey. Nothing. Nothing. He said, honor your father and your mother so that it will be well with you. For this is the first and only commandment with a promise. Yeah. So, I now said, what is the only condition where you can insult your father and curse him? If you can give him back his nose, give him back his ear, give him back his eye, give him back his head. I don't know if you are getting me. Uh -huh. <laughs> give him back his leg. Yeah. Because this, your, you are insulting him. Yet, if you check your leg, there's one God mark there. He's in his own leg. As you see him, he's the one that gave birth to you. You can see yourself in the mirror. You can see his nose in your nose. You can see his eye in your eye. <laughs> you don't understand. As you curse him like this, you are cursing yourself. Don't try it. I said, who is, who is the issue? I said, it is between mother and father. Is it not so? The man was the lady's once bubble. It was once his fine bubble. Uh -huh. So she should enjoy the bubble she chose. And stop involving the children in battle that the children don't have the jurisdiction to handle. Yeah, the children don't have the jurisdiction to handle it. And you should also, that's why I told you, I said, single mothers, be careful. Tell your children the truth. Don't be turning them against their father. No. If they have, they should give to their father. The children know what to do. Like, for instance, before my father will eat um, 200,000 from me, my mom has collected 2 million. Yes. All the while my dad was alive. Are you getting me? My dad, once I give him money monthly like this, he will not disturb me till the end of the month. But my mother, hey, I will give, I will give something on the first. On the future, and I don't know. As I they go for road, I don't know what they worry these keke people. He just can't jam my motor. The bumper don't come out. My picking, I better send something. I will send. 
Then you will be going, I don't know, tire, this is my motto. Uh, nay, just you come. I need to change the tire. Before month will end, she has collected all, all manner from my hand. When you calculate it, my, what my father has got to is not up to 10%. So because of the because of what she did for me, because even though I, I, I value that because I knew as I grew up, I knew that what all my mom did to me was the trauma. You know, she got pregnant at 17. It was too young to be a mother. So she didn't have the maturity to be a mother. So it's only a pain she was taking out on me. So as I grew up, I understood because even though she went through that trauma. She kept coming after me. Wherever I am, she will come and look for me there. Wherever I am, she will come and look for me just to show that she's concerned. She tried to carry me to her house, but husband did not allow. So, but she was responsible for my school. Sending the money. Sending the jam money. Sending the school fees till I graduated. My father was, my father did not. In fact, when I finished primary school, I stayed almost a year plus in the house without entering secondary school because my father could not go and enroll me in secondary school. My mom had to come to come and enroll me in a secondary school. Yeah. So if you had left him, if, if I did be my mom died while giving birth to me, his truck I would have pushed straight away. Straight away because I was already working with those boys in saw Mill already before my mom came. <laughs> I was already so that's why as you see me so what i've gone through in this my life is 10 people's life i've packed sawdust i've sawn i've worked in some me that one that they stand on and it will be going like this cutting the wood you stand you go you come back you go you go again then the one they push to for you to divide the wood into to all of them there's no one we have not done <laughs> i don't know if you are getting me yes or is he load you want to carry everything i've carried blocks to do some things. Yeah. Hustling. Because that's the that's the and that's how you survive in the street. Because each day you handle each day as it comes. Today you also four five. Tomorrow you also three thousand. You don't want to steal phone. You don't want to steal back. Then you have to do the the rugged work. Okay, so what that question, please. Uh, your father and your mother's issue is in your father and your mother's that is their matter. Please, even if your mother you don't want to hurt your mother because there's something I observe. Let me tell you the truth. When I sent my dad money, my mom don't used to be happy. So I observed it as a man. So I was now not telling her. I knew it was the right thing to do to take care of him. My mom would say, I know say may you not take care of your papa, but when I do it and she hears, I observe doesn't go well down go down well so i don't tell her so i just do what i want to do for my dad i do what i want to do for so as a man you become mature you know what to do so when you know he's making your mom upset and your mom is the one that took care of you don't give her emotional problem because once you, if she hears that you give your father money who did not take her she will just start crying i talk him i talk and say these children after everything when i do for them they go see go bear their papa name i talk him. you see so don't allow her cry or necessary cry just <laughs> so take care of her so that it will show you appreciate what she has done but for your father use your left hand to do what you are doing without allowing your right hand no and that saves you all the stress. So for, for the person that is saying, uh, my mother said, my mother said, calm down with your mother said. Just do the right thing. Take, do what you want to do for your father without telling your mother. Full stop. Huh? Any other question? Yes, I'll take these two together. Okay. Right. So the first one said, a friend of mine slapped my dad and it has been in my heart for long. What should I do? The second one says, I have a question, sir. I've been in a relationship for like four years and we broke up because of his mom please the pain is still in my heart the pain in my heart is over two years and i still find it hard to forget it's please re repeat me. it repeat it this second one yes okay she said she was in a relationship for four years okay and she broke up with the guy yeah because of her mom please the pain is still in her heart and it's over two years now 
and she still finds it very difficult to forget and it's still affecting her mentally. Okay. While well, the first person said somebody slapped his dad and he cannot forgive. Uh, it depends. Uh, if it's a bouncer that slapped the dad, he has to, he has to evaluate whether he's man enough to chest it before he, before he collects his own slap. It's just like you are going. You are going. They say, I'm in slap somebody. Then, I'm in slap your dad. Then, you come and say, I've not been able to forgive the army man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is your own forgiveness. So, now God and I, you want to receive and You want to sit down for God that for under the sun for 12 hours. Then, you come forgive. So, you have to generally in everything we cannot encourage people in church we don't encourage people to go and get violent okay in a civilized place someone slap your dad what you're supposed to do is to file a case and report police will handle it being physical you will cause damage he gave your father a slap at the end of the day maybe if you get into a fight with him you kill him or he kills you i don't know if you get maybe as you hit him somewhere if he falls down and die or he hits you somewhere so it has moved from slap to murder. Do you understand? So taking revenge physically is always out of the case. If you really want to do something, go legal. That's for me. Someone slaps somebody and you think you want to deal with the person and you don't want to forget, no problem. Just file a case. Let police pick him up. Let him go to court and explain why he slapped an elderly person. So it's the best way. Just do it legally. Let authorities handle it. See, as believers, this is 21st century. Don't be, don't be getting physical. We are not in jet age. We are not in the village. We are in town. Are you with me? We are in the city. When somebody does something, don't be setting blow and the rest. Just give it to authorities. Let them handle it. You understand? Let authorities handle it and you are good. Huh? Huh? So that's for that. Then the other lady that said, uh, the mother discouraged her from marrying the person and this is how many years now? How many years? Huh? Yes, sir. How many years? Two years. Two years. They were together for four years. And this is two years after the breakup. And, and so six years all together. Okay. So four years. She didn't complete it. She would have told me whether the boy is married now. So that I will know how to put the question. But nonetheless, if they were together four years, now the mother intervened and they didn't marry. And this is two years. Whether the guy is, if the guy is married, I would have said, okay, that's a close case. If the guy is not married, if, is, if she's still um, into him and they are still discussing, she can still go back to the mother and try to convince the mother if something can still happen. But if the guy is already married and she feels the guy was a good guy, but the mother convinced her out of the conversation and she subscribes to the mother's advice, after two years, she's supposed to move on. So if she's finding it difficult to move on because of the wound that has already happened, she has to, one of the fastest way to heal from broken heart is being busy and try to involve yourself in new relationships. Do you understand? Not to take on the new person as a wounded person, but just to find happiness again and try to be busy, try to find work. Some of these ladies used to think about relationship too much. If you ask her now, She's, she's orange, she's selling, and she's thinking too much about man. Do you understand? So, improve yourself and be busy. Do you understand? When you are busy, you will not be talking love, 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 or any small thing. Some ladies, it's only relationship that is in their head from morning to evening. They cannot think of learning, they cannot think of learning computer, having IT, just improving on themselves. It's only relationship. Now, I want to finally I want to finally conclude in answering this lady's question. I want to conclude. As a lady, marriage is not your destiny. It's not marriage that makes you fulfill destiny. The fulfillment of your destiny is what God has placed inside you. So if marriage comes, then a man has his destiny, you have your destiny. So you are coming together so that you can fulfill greater destiny together. But you must first have a destination you are going to. 
Not that you are seated waiting for a man who has destiny to come and carry you as a load. No. You are not a load. You are already mobile before he came. I don't know if you are getting me. Number two. You are 34, 35, 38 as a lady. And you are coming to tell me that you are single. I understand that you are single. I am praying for you. But don't tell me you are also poor. No. I will not understand. Okay. So don't be poor and single at 38. No. You are single. I understand. Don't tell me you are poor. I will just say you are now. You are stupid now. Have I helped somebody here? Yeah. I'm single yet you are broke. 38. Is it the marriage too that made you broke at 38? It's accumulation of foolishness. May the Lord give you understanding. Rise to your feet and bless the name of the Lord. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. A lot of persons has found a place to heal and an anchor today. Just bless the name of the Lord. Just say, Father, I thank you. I heal. I heal. I forgive. I let go. Just whisper to the Lord and say, Father, I let go. I forgive anybody that I've held in my heart. Just, just whisper to the Lord. God is listening and is looking at your heart. Say, I forgive this person. If you, if you remember them, just call their name. And you know that you have said you will never forgive. Just say, Lord, I forgive. Lord, I forgive. I refuse to hold myself down. He has moved on. I refuse to hold myself down. I refuse to hold myself down. I refuse to hold myself down. 